In a world where over 138 countries have already adopted China's Beidou satellite navigation system, one country stands out for saying no. India. That decision caught the attention of analysts, defense experts, and tech observers around the world. Why? Because Beidou isn't some trial program. It's a fully operational, high-performance global navigation system, comparable to the US GPS. It offers location accuracy within 2.5 to 5 meters, supports military operations, powers global logistics, enables infrastructure, and connects billions of devices across Asia, Africa, and beyond. So when China officially invited India to collaborate, many expected a handshake, especially with India's growing appetite for space-based technologies. Instead, India flatly declined. This wasn't a polite refusal. It was a calculated strategic statement. A clear message that India had no interest in being a customer or a junior partner in China's expanding tech sphere. Indian media and officials pushed back quickly, claiming Indian scientists were already developing a next-generation GPS of their own. And that bold refusal raised a bigger question. Is India isolating itself from a rising global standard or leading its own tech revolution? To understand why India's rejection of Beidou matters so much, we first need to recognize how powerful satellite navigation systems have become. At a glance, GPS seems like just a tool for helping your phone find the nearest coffee shop, but it's far more than that. These systems guide planes, ships, military drones, tanks, ambulances, and even smart tractors. They help control traffic in megacities, monitor seismic activity, and synchronize power grids and global financial systems, down to the millisecond. In short, these aren't just tools. They are strategic assets. Whoever controls the signal can influence everything, from national defense to economic resilience. It all began with the US, which launched the first global navigation system, GPS, in the 1970s. Originally built for military use, it became a free global service used by billions. But the US has always retained the right to restrict access, especially during times of war. Other powers took note. Russia built GLONASS. The European Union developed Galileo. And China began working on Beidou in the 1990s, determined to never be vulnerable to foreign disruption. They all pursued the same goal, technological sovereignty. And now India has entered the race too. But what exactly is Beidou? And why is it considered such a global powerhouse? Beidou may have started as China's answer to GPS, but today it's one of the world's most advanced satellite navigation systems, both technologically and geopolitically. After nearly 30 years of development, China completed Beidou's global rollout in 2020, becoming just the third country in history after the US and Russia to operate a fully independent global system. Here's why it matters. Global coverage from Asia to Africa to Europe, Beidou serves civilian, commercial, and military applications. Precision, it offers 2.5 to 5 meter accuracy, on par with GPS and even better in some regions. Mass adoption, over 200 million Chinese users rely on Beidou every day. The system handles over 210 billion requests daily, across phones, logistics, drones, and more. Economic value, Beidou contributes about 470 billion yuan, or around 65 billion US dollars, to China's economy every year. But Beidou is also a soft power tool. China has signed space cooperation deals with 138 countries, many across the developing world. It's embedded into infrastructure, agriculture, shipping, and emergency response especially under China's Belt and Road Initiative. From orbit to ocean, Beidou is helping China build global influence without firing a single shot. So with a system this powerful, why did India still walk away? To answer that, we have to understand what India is building instead. India didn't respond to Beidou with cooperation. It responded with competition. Instead of joining China's network, India chose to develop its own satellite navigation system from scratch. It's called the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, or IRNSS, now rebranded as NAVIC, short for Navigation with Indian Constellation. But this decision wasn't made recently. It goes back to 1999 during the Kargil War, when India relied on the US GPS for critical positioning data, and the US denied access at a crucial moment. That moment exposed a painful truth. In times of conflict, dependence becomes a liability. India's response was clear never again. By 2006, the government had greenlit the RNSS project. Launches began in 2013, and within three years, seven satellites were in orbit.
By 2018, Navasea was operational, all built at a cost of just 280 million US dollars. Unlike GPS or Beidou, Navasea is regional, designed to serve India and surrounding areas within a 1,500 kilometer radius. For domestic needs like transport, agriculture, disaster response, and mobile apps, it works well. Most importantly, it's fully under Indian control, operated by ISRO. No foreign access, no outside interference, just independent sovereign infrastructure. China built Beidou to reduce its reliance on the US. India is doing the same, but with China in mind. On paper, NAVIC is a huge achievement, but when you stack it against giants like GPS and Beidou, some clear differences appear. GPS has over 30 satellites, Beidou has around 45, NAVIC has 7, and well, 2 have failed. That leaves just 5 working satellites, limiting coverage and reliability. NAVIC is regional, ideal for India, but not for global use. GPS and Beidou offer full global coverage, including oceans, poles, and remote areas, giving them a clear edge in international transport and defense. NAVIC offers about 20 meter accuracy, solid for local use. GPS and Beidou offer roughly 2.5 to 5 meter accuracy, which is vital for military, aviation, and precision industries. Here's where Navasi stands out, though. India uses encrypted military signals and emphasizes data protection. Positioning Navasi is more secure against cyber intrusion or foreign tracking. But the truth is, Navasi is still evolving. It's promising, but not yet a full-scale rival to GPS or Beidou. India has announced plans to upgrade the system expanding satellites, boosting signal range, and even enabling integration with smartphones. But that takes time. For now, India is choosing control over convenience. It's saying no to global systems it can't fully trust, even if they're faster or broader, and investing in long-term digital independence. The answer goes far beyond technology. It comes down to sovereignty, security, and trust. India's refusal wasn't about technical doubts, it was a strategic response to geopolitical mistrust. Despite growing trade, the relationship between India and China has been shaped by border tensions, military standoffs, and competing influence across Asia. To New Delhi, accepting Beidou would mean relying on Beijing for access to something as critical as real-time positioning data, the kind used to guide fighter jets, missile systems, naval fleets, and emergency operations. In a crisis, what if China restricted access? What if the system was used to monitor Indian assets? These aren't just hypothetical risks, they're grounded in history. And India isn't alone in this thinking. The United States won't use Beidou for military operations. China didn't trust GPS, so it built Beidou. Russia created GLONASS for the same reason. Satellite navigation isn't just about getting from A to B anymore. It's about owning the signal, owning the data, staying in control. India also fears cybersecurity risks. If Indian infrastructure, communication systems, or consumer devices were tethered to Beidou, it could open back doors for surveillance or sabotage, especially during political tension. So from India's perspective, saying no to Beidou wasn't saying no to progress. It was drawing a clear line in the digital sand, a message will take the long road if it means staying independent. That brings us to the next question. Can India actually catch up? Can Navasi reach the level of GPS or Beidou? Navasi has already shown that India can build and operate a navigation system on its own, but to compete globally, scale and strategy are everything. Right now, NAVIC has limited coverage and just a few working satellites. To expand globally, India needs at least 24 satellites, a leap that will require billions in investment, multiple rocket launches, and ongoing maintenance. But here's the good news. India is already making moves. ISRO has announced a roadmap to upgrade and expand NAVIC into a full-scale global system. New satellites are being developed with more accurate atomic clocks, dual-frequency signals, and stronger encryption for military and civilian use. And momentum is building on the ground, too. Indian smartphone makers are being pushed to adopt NAVIC chips. Government mandates now require NAVIC and navigation devices used by commercial trucks, fishing vessels, and drones. Indian missiles, aircraft, and defense platforms are being adapted to use NAVIC instead of foreign GPS. But this is about more than just hardware. It's also about influence. If India succeeds in building a global NAVIC system, it could offer an alternative to developing nations that don't want to depend on the United States, China, or Russia. That could give India real soft power, the kind that affects not just trade or tech, but alliances and diplomacy. Of course, the road ahead won't be easy. 
India faces budget limitations, launch constraints, and fierce global competition. But NAVI-C is no longer just a science project. It's a statement, a sign of India's growing independence and willingness to invest in strategic autonomy. And as the global tech race heats up, India's decision to go its own way may pay off, not just in orbits, but in influence. We tend to think of GPS as something simple, a tool to find a restaurant, to check traffic. But as we've seen, satellite navigation is anything but trivial. It's the invisible backbone of military command, global trade, disaster relief, and even national identity. So when India rejected Beidou, it wasn't about pride. It was about protecting sovereignty in an age when digital systems are increasingly used as weapons. NAVIC is more than India's version of GPS. It's a bold push for tech independence, for control over the very systems that shape the future. And though India's system is still young, the message is clear. In the 21st century, who controls the satellites controls the signal. And who controls the signal controls the outcome on land, at sea, in the air, and in orbit. So the next time you open Google Maps or follow directions in your car, remember this, you're not just using a convenience, you're plugging into the front lines of a global tech war, one that India has just joined, and Navi C. It's more than navigation. It's a declaration of sovereignty, a tool of national defense, and maybe the foundation for a more balanced digital future.